What's up guys, me how take this tutorials. Now a lot of you saw a video in which I have built a free NAS, uh, the cheapest possible free NAS. If you haven't seen this video, I will link it here or or maybe down in the comment section below. But maybe for some of you, or I know that for some of you this was a little bit too complicated. Some people would like to have a simple storage solution with just one drive but no compromises, so at least two terabytes of, of data, a built-in router and a device that, could, that they could turn their printer into a network printer and they would like to have this very very cheap in a very very convenient way. And I have found a way to do this. Today we are going to build the cheapest time capsule that is possible. Stay tuned! Now if you have watched this far, you might be thinking, hmm, time capsule, this is actually an Apple device. Yes, it is. But as with all Apple devices, there is one problem. The word cheap is not the first one that comes in your head. Uh, most of these devices are a little bit overpriced in my opinion. But now there is a way that you could actually get yourself a pretty decent router with uh, decent specs, with decent speed at relatively low cost. Now, I wanted to have a time capsule just to take a look how this works and I started uh, to search on the web and I have found that the first gen time capsule you can buy for something like 50 bucks. This is not very expensive, however, this is not the whole cost. So, as Apple announced this device, it was in 2009, as I recall correctly, they have announced two devices, one with 500 gigabytes uh, drive, second with one terabyte drive. And the price was a little bit on the steeper side, although Steve Jobs said that actually the drive that is inside of this time capsule is a server grade stuff. Now, I'm not that sure about that, but even if it was a server-grade drive, the device that was manufactured, uh, let's say, in 2009 or 10, is like now seven years old. Uh, each drive that have been working for seven years should be thrown into trash. You shouldn't be using that. Even most of the drives that uh, are installed in enterprise for enterprise purposes should be used not longer than five years. So you use it five years. If it's okay, still you should exchange this drive. The old goes uh, to the trash. So the th first thing uh, we would like to do is to disassemble this first gen uh, time capsule and replace the drive inside. Now, we are going to do this with uh, some, uh, some, in my opinion, a little bit better drive that they have used. This is an enterprise storage WD uh, drive. Very, very reliable thing, but you can say, you, you can use, for example, there's a lot of drives that are, are built at the moment to be, are meant to be used. Uh, in a NAS, in a NAS solution, in a server solution, there are reds, there are uh, a handful, plenty of drives. And actually, even for this first gen time capsule, you can pick anything as long as uh, it's two terabytes. The swap process is very easy. Uh, you will just need a heater. Uh, you can you can use a heat gun, you can use hair dryer, something to heat this uh, rubber feet underneath. Uh, this time capsule and we need to peel uh, this rubber very easy just two minutes uh, of work and uh, take your time uh, try not to try not to break the rubber although it's very easy that the rubber is thick you should be fine now uh, if you if that what you see is not helping you uh, to disassemble this drive there is a very a uh, very nice guide on iFixit. Uh, you could use that. Uh, although they recommend to leave a few screws at the bottom uh, that are holding the fan inside, actually in the first gen uh, time capsule there is a fan. 
I strongly recommend removing all of the screws from the bottom cover, taking out the fan, cleaning this up, cleaning the whole unit. It's again, it's seven years old uh, device. You should clean it up. Now, then the exchange of the drive is very, very simple. Uh, there is a, a heat sensor uh, attached to the drive, but with a little bit foam and an adhesive, it, uh, it can be removed very easy. Uh, there are four pegs screwed into this drive. You just need a Phillips screwdriver to unscrew them, replace them, uh, reuse them for uh, for the new drive. Uh, attach power cable, attach SATA data cable, and you are fine. Basically, uh, you just need to screw the bottom cover again with something like 10 screws and uh, the adhesive that was on this rubber feet uh, will allow you to, it can be reused, like basically you can reuse it and and you can attach, uh, uh, attach this rubber feet again. Now, once you have done that, you have built yourself a very, very capable device. Now, I have found that the drive uh, that you can see on the screen right now that I have used is actually a bit quieter than this uh, drive that I've took out of uh, of the original with Apple branding. So no problems there, the drive is very fast. I know it's re reliable because I've been using it for uh, servers for, for a very long time, so that's fine too. Now, performance. Mm, first of all, let's talk about uh, router in this device. The first gen Apple uh, time capsule features 2.4 and 5 uh, gigahertz uh, dual band uh, router that is uh, N capable. So you can use broad channels, this uh, 40 megahertz channels, and this will allow you easy at the 5 gigahertz uh, band to achieve something like 100, 120 megabits. And which by my standards it's plenty if you are planning to use it as an internet sharing device. Now two things it comes short. Uh, actually this can be configured either as uh, a bridge or as a router so you can uh, you can use it behind the router without double NAT or you can use it with a double nut feature if if that's your thing. It's it's very neat how how it uh, inform you that your your IP configuration may not be optimal. But this video is not uh, how to configure a router. I assume that you know what you are doing. If not, leave a comment. I will I will create a video how how to configure a, a proper router or even this one. So you can use it as a router but with not that many features mm, actually this can only translate uh, IP addresses and basically that's it uh, or you can use this as an access point as an access point with uh, let's say 100 to 120 uh, megabits a second it's decent for internet sharing However, if you are going to access a lot of data, video from the drive built inside, 120 megabits, mm, well, it would be better to have, uh, to have something with AC. But there is a thing, don't forget that you have bought this router for, let's say, 50 bucks plus the cost of the drive. If you choose any, any modern AC uh, router, plus it some kind of uh, network attached storage inside, you will pay a lot more. And this device even, it looks fine. It can be configured both as, um, as a time capsule for Mac. So if you are a Mac user, you can use this uh, for time machine purposes, but that's not it. Uh, you can also connect this to a Windows machine and share the very same drive that you are creating your backups from Mac as uh, a network a network share so that's great you can even set up uh, basic rules like uh, password accounts uh, permissions whether you can only read uh, or write so perfectly capable device for a little bit of money 
with Apple logo, with nice design, you don't get a, you just need a power cord. You don't even have a, uh, like something with a huge power brick. No, just a simple power cord connectors. So I think it's actually a good deal at this moment. I would never pay the full price that you can, you can go to apple.com and see how much actually their routers cost. Of course, they feature uh, AC, they feature, uh, uh, beam forming technology is something that you can actually get on enterprise uh, access points like rockets or, or something like that. It's cool, but these are not really routers. And please keep that thought because uh, I will create a video about what actually a real router should be able to do. If you are somebody with a network background, you will you will need a lot of more than than you won't ever call something that is basically a bridge uh, or an access point a router. A router should be able to to do VPNs, to do multiple protocols. It should give you way more flexibility that you are ever need from uh, will be able to get from a consumer grade device. However, again, if you are adding a cost of network attached storage, one drive only, so no real security it's still one drive that you will have to back up but uh, okay it is what it is and plus uh, this router capability plus uh, you get you get a USB port that you can connect either a printer or you could connect uh, another external drive and share also this drive so you get a ton of feature from a device that most of people are trying at the moment to throw in a garbage. So maybe, maybe, just maybe, if you would like to see what Steve Jobs had in mind when he created this device, or you need this specific device with features that I have mentioned, or you would like to... I was just curious, I just wanted to see, hey, can I exchange the drive? Uh, will this work? How how complicated this is? What will be the performance of this access point? Is this any good? It turned out to be a very nice device for sharing something modest like my 120 megabits at the moment that I have. It got f it's got four gigabit ports, so it also adds a small a small gigabit switch. I actually had a five port uh, gigabit switch that I was able to eliminate by installing this drive. Um, I'm thinking also about creating a video how to uh, create a copy from a free NAS directly to this time capsule. So not only to be able to back up my Mac, but also to be able to back up some of the data from free NAS uh, again, uh, with with some kind of synchronization from FreeNAS, also to this drive, it would be fun to 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 hear your feedback. What do you what do you think? In my opinion, it's a great device to to experiment. Even it could be nice addition if you don't have, for example, five gigahertz. Uh, network at home and you would like to start. Uh, it connects great with uh, all modern uh, tablets. It's no problem of course with uh, iPad, with uh, iPhone. Uh, most In most of the places if you are living in some kind of residential area the 2.4 gigahertz band is, is basically shit. It's tons of access point. 5 gigahertz degrades itself after let's say two brick walls you won't be able to hear uh, here uh, this network so it gives you way more consistent speed uh, than any other 2.4 uh, gigahertz uh, access points so you might consider uh, using 5 gigahertz if you don't have I can't think uh, any better uh, reason why not to spend let's say again 50 bucks take this apart clean this up exchange the drive eat the two terabytes drive have some fun learn something and have something with apple logo if you of course uh, are not hater uh, so yeah that was my that was my experience with this time capsule this video turned out to be way longer than i wanted but 
let me hear uh, what you what you think about this. Let me think what you think about this device. What you think about using all time capsule down down in the comment section below. If you learned have some, if you have learned something or or I have gave you an idea what to do, leave a thumbs thumbs up. Uh, it encourages me to create more video. Thanks again for watching and see you next time. Bye.